Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. This is Jason Watt, and in this video, we are going to talk about the Registered Pension Plan. So a Registered Pension Plan is a number of different pension arrangements. The three Registered Pension Plans are the Defined Benefit Plan, which is sort of the classic pension plan. And then we have the Defined Contribution Plan. This is also known as a Money Purchase Plan. The two terms are really interchangeable. And then our third type of pension plan, which you only have to worry about if you're studying at the Certified Financial Planner level or a similar level, is the Individual Pension Plan. The Individual Pension Plan is a, a fairly complex arrangement that really is sort of a hybrid between an RRSP and a defined benefit pension. And we won't worry about the IPP here. We're going to look at defined benefit and defined contribution or we usually just abbreviate these as DB or DC plans. So registered pension plans share tax characteristics with the RRSP. They're taxed in a very similar manner. That is, any kind of contributions are tax deductible. and any kind of growth or returns or whatever we want to call the money that we make while we're invested, that's going to be tax deferred. And then at the end, when you take income out, when you actually go to take funds out, that income, when you take it out, is going to be taxable. So those tax characteristics are very similar to the RRSP and when you make contributions you're actually going to lose or when your employer makes contributions as well you're going to lose your RRSP room that's a process that we call a pension adjustment in the pension adjustment Basically, a dollar that goes into a registered pension plan or an equivalent dollar, because it's a little bit more complicated in a defined benefit plan, is going to be ta is going to reduce your RRSP room. So the whole intent here with the pension adjustment is that it reduces your RRSP contribution room. So if they're taxed the same as the RRSP, we must have some differences, and we do. And really where it comes in is the fact that this is now an employer-sponsored plan. And actually what that means is that with this pension plan, the employer has a fiduciary responsibility or a fiduciary duty to the employees. They must make contributions. So really, once an employer sets one of these plans up, they have to ensure that it's adequately funded. We do have funding requirements here. The employer has to put money into these plans on a regular basis to make sure that there will be funding here that the employees will eventually use to provide income in retirement. This is now a legislative set of requirements and we do have minimum and maximum incomes that we take out of these plans. Later on we'll deal with that a little bit later so just for now though we can see that the employer has to really take proper care of the employee with one of these plans. Okay. Now we said that this is very similar to the RRSP but there are some substantial differences. 
because this is a pension, we have locking in provisions here. So any funds that accumulate here are generally going to be locked in. Now, that being said, if you're a member of one of these pension plans and you're there for some period up to two years, then your contributions won't have vested yet. And if you leave the plan, then you can typically get back out what you put into it. But once you're more than two years, and these rules do vary a little bit, once you're more than two years on the plan, your contributions are vested, meaning that whatever's gone into the plan belongs to the employee now. But also at that point, that's where we get to that locking in. Prior to that time, it may be possible for the employee to lose some of the contributions that were made on their behalf, not money they put in, but certainly funds that their employer put in don't invest before that time. However, those funds aren't locked in until that two years of membership on the plan. It can be sooner than that, but that's a fairly standard set of provisions. There is some provincial variation there, and what you will find is that the rules for registered pension plan do vary from province to province. They also, um, there are also, sorry, a different set of rules at the federal level. So this is kind of a broad overview of registered pension plans. We will have a look at the defined benefit and defined contribution plans as well. Hope you find this helpful. Please do let me know if you have any questions.